everyone. This week, I want to talk about creative nonfiction, which is what will, which is the genre we'll be diving into as our second focus point uh, or focus area for this semester. I'm really excited about creative nonfiction. Um, it's my favorite of all of the genres of creative writing. I enjoy fiction. I love poetry, but there's something about CNF that keeps drawing me to it. Um, I started writing, I took a creative writing or creative nonfiction course um, in undergrad. At the time, I thought I was going to focus mainly on poetry in grad school. And once I took the creative nonfiction course, I realized that's kind of what I was looking for. Um, so my master's is a master of fine arts from Spalding University in writing, and I focused on creative nonfiction. So this is it's kind of my baby, and I hope you all enjoy it too. Um, I've published a few personal essays, um, memoir essays, some more experimental forms, and I'm working on a couple of memoirs. Um, so I do have a lot more experience with this genre than the others. So hopefully you will find that experience a little valuable. So let's begin. Let's get started. So let's do a quick overview of the history of creative nonfiction. Um, if you're really interested in the history, um, there's a really good book by Philip Lopate called um, The Art of the Personal Essay that goes, sorry, the cat's getting my nerves, um, that goes over the history of the form of personal essay in particular. Um, but basically, in order to distill a lot of history down, I'm going to have to really condense this. But creative nonfiction is one of the oldest forms of writing. Um, fiction mainly came out of oral storytelling, as did a lot of dramatic of drama and poetry. Um, creative nonfiction was one of the first to really be written down. It has roots in Europe, especially uh, in France with Montaigne and Francis Bacon. You have writings by Sir Thomas Aquinas. And then in Asia, you have the Japanese Zuihitsu and the Chinese eight-legged essay, both which were for, uh, focused on form and exploration within form. The Zuihitsu was much more experimental and loosely connected. The Chinese eight-legged essay was much more intensely focused. But in general, um, out of all of these areas came this, these for, this form. Um, it was once studied as a predominantly male form of writing in academia, particularly European white male, but that has changed. It started changing due to the emergence of women writers such as Virginia Woolf. Um, and now it's one of the more diverse forms of writing. Um, I think it, give, it has the potential to give everyone a voice and the opportunity to share experience and different ways of living and existing in the world. Um, it seemed like it was dying down for a bit, but with the proliferation of online literary magazines, it's flourishing right now. So what's so creative about creative nonfiction? If it's nonfiction, that means it's true. So how can I be creative with that? Well, Lee Goodkind, who actually dubbed, named the genre creative nonfiction, um, refers to it as true stories well told. You're telling the truth, you're telling a true story, but you're relating it in such a way that it's entertaining and well written. Um, it unifies the best of fiction with the best of poetry, so it's the perfect middle genre for us to look at. Um, it's one of the most experimental forms or genres of writing. Um, there's a lot of room within creative nonfiction to experiment and try different things. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is the difference between capital T truth and lowercase t truth. Um, so when we think about capital T, you can tell I was a philosophy minor. Um, we think about objective truth. This is what happens because I can look it up and look at the facts and know that this is exactly what happened. Lowercase truth is what we're focusing on. There's a poem by Emily Dickinson that has the line, tell the truth, but tell it slant. And this is also the title of one of my favorite books on writing creative nonfiction. You're telling your truth. You're telling things how you remember them. And you're telling the story of how you experience the world. 
It's not concerned with objective truth, but personal truth. You still don't want to make things up and lie, but you have some room in there. And it's basically, like I said, a retelling of your personal experience. <clears throat> Whereas some forms of creative nonfiction, which we'll talk about um, a little bit, deal with writing about others' experiences. For our purposes, we want to write about our own experiences. There are, so, there are a lot of types of creative nonfiction, like I said. Um, it's one of the more experimental forms. And because of that, it seems like it's a title of a type of a genre of writing that's so big that it probably needs to be split into more than just creative nonfiction. There, when we think about creative nonfiction, what we think of mostly are memoirs or personal or books written about ourselves um, on a more focused topic, autobiographies, which are books written about ourselves, about a wider span or lifespan, biography, writing about someone else's life. There's personal essays, which is examining a, the experience of our own. Um, immersion writing, which is where you go out and try a new experience and write about it. You kind of immerse yourself in the topic. Um, I've written a couple of these. One was about the justice system and how it kind of neglects kids a lot. And I wrote that while I was working with kids in the system. And then I wrote another one about academic tattoos. And so I interviewed a lot of people who had more academic or um, nerdy tattoos. And then I got my own. Um, I got on my wrist, I don't know if you can see it on this video, but it says examine life. And it's a quote from Socrates. Lyric essays, which are basically as close to poetry as you can get while writing nonfiction and prose. And we'll talk about those more when we can talk about experimentation and form. Then there's investigative journalism, which is very similar to immersion writing, but you're writing about a social issue or something like that, and you're kind of living the experience. And there's travel writing, where you're traveling and writing about your travels, food writing, which is similar to travel writing, but it's about food instead of traveling. Profiles, where you intensely examine someone else's life and write about it. There's culture writing with personal experience. Um, if you had me for English 101, you're probably familiar with pulp culture writing and personal essays that connect with some element of popular culture. And there's many more. Um, if there's something you're dying to write about, there's probably an outlet or room for it in creative nonfiction. There are also some really interesting faith writing traditions, but those tend to fall under a memoir or personal essay instead of being their own separate subgenre. What I want to focus on the most is personal essay. Um, I am assuming that's what most of us will focus on. If you want to write part of a longer project like a memoir, that is absolutely fine as well. Um, I'm definitely not going to tell you not to do that. Um, but for our sake, I'll, I'll at least refer mostly to the personal essay. The only difference between a personal essay and a memoir is the length. Personal essay is a standalone essay and memoir is typically a book. But it's personal, so it's about me, or about the writer. An essay, which comes from the word essay, which is an exploration or a discovery of an experience. So it's not a retelling of the experience that you're writing about, but it's a personal investigation of diving deep into what this experience means. Why is it meaningful to me? What impact does it have beyond me? Those kinds of things. It's basically a focus on what happened and why does it matter? Um, my good, strong personal essay will have a balance between scene and summary. So we talked a lot about scenes in fiction and you'll have those same types of scenes in a personal essay, but you'll also have some summary. Um, or um, mini scenes. It's another way that it's been referred to. Like you'll have a scene, but you also have type a point where you elaborate on what that scene meant to you. And there's a balance between macro and micro structures. And we'll talk about both of these in future lectures or videos, and also in reading of, of the text. A macro structure is basically the overall 
what it looks like on the page. Microstructure refers to language. How is the language put together? What are the, what are, um, how are sentences structured? What kind of experience are they creating? Um, and as you'll, as you'll see through some of the example essays we'll read, when it comes to the structure, especially that macro structure, creative nonfiction is pretty much all over the map. And that's not even an exaggeration because I'm um, Dinty W. Moore, who is one of my favorite creative nonfiction authors, has an essay that he published that was written through Google Maps. So it literally is all over the map. The possibilities are pretty endless when it comes to creative nonfiction. There's a focus on language and how do I use language to recreate an experience? Um, there's a little, a lot more of room to experiment with sentence structure and playing with sentence fragments and lo longer sentences to create voice and tone. Um, playing with words to um, echo the experience. Experimentation, like I said, when it comes to structure, it can look like almost anything. And we will talk about, we'll have an entire video on experimentation with structure um, because it's my favorite part of creative nonfiction. But you're not like forced into a box of what the essay has to look like. Um, you can play with it as much as you want. A lot of the focus is on word painting, which is my favorite way of looking at description. This idea of intensely describing what's going on around you and recreating that experience so your reader can identify with what you're experiencing. Odds are you'll be writing about something that others in the class and myself haven't experienced because we all experience the world in very different ways. How you convey your experience to your readers so they understand it is through intense description and detail. You want to evoke emotion and make your readers experience something along with you. And while a lot of writers will write about major things that happen, you can also write about topics that are very small or smaller, and, but they have to be, that as long as they're important to you. I've written essays about subjects as big as coming out as a queer person and recovering from domestic abuse to going on 15 minute rounds when I worked at a, on a children's behavioral unit, just the piece I found within those 15 minutes. Um, there's an essay by Virginia Woolf called The Death of a Moth. And those are very small things, or they can be very big. It's up to you. I think sometimes people think that there has to be some big like trauma to write about. And you are more than welcome to write about trauma. Um, I have a lot of experience with trauma writing. And I would love to talk to you about that more if you want. But it can also be about some small interaction you had with someone that meant a lot. The one thing I want to convey the most is that um, approach this with an with an uh, with open mindedness, willingness to try new things and experiment, and figure out what works for you. We'll look at a few, quite a few different examples. Um, We'll do a, quite a few little exercises when it comes to writing. You may have already discovered something you want to write about through your through your time working through um, the Felicia Day book, Embrace Your Weird. I've gotten some prompts for myself out of there that I'm dying to write about. More than anything, I hope you have fun. Um, I know I blew through a quick introduction here, but I hope through between this video and reading the text that um, will come to some sort of excitement or um, awareness and understanding of what creative nonfiction is and what it can be. I hope this helped and I hope you have a wonderful week. And um, please, if you have any questions or if there's a particular type of creative nonfiction that you would like to know more about, please reach out and let me know. Um, I have some essays that I've already kind of decided to assign, but I would be glad to switch things out or to send some supplemental ratings to you if you're interested in a certain type. Have a good week.